In this section, we're going to talk about a topic that uses implicit differentiation, but it's called related rates. And so, as I said, related rates is it's an extension of implicit differentiation. And applications, um, it's not unusual for two variables, say x and y, to be differentiable functions of a third outside variable, like time or temperature. In these instances, one must think of both x and y as functions of this outside variable, like you would with y when you implicitly differentiate. So you can... If t is the outside variable or outside parameter, you could think of x as f of t, and you could think of y as g of t, and then you would have um, x and y as a function of t. So I'm going to begin with some equations, and I'm going to differentiate each term with respect to this particular outside variable that I'm talking about with. As I do this, remember that all variables in the equation should be thought of as a function of another variable, t. Let's start with a very simple expression, x squared plus y squared equal 49. And let's take the derivative of each of these terms with respect to this outside variable, t. So I'm going to apply d over dt to each term. Well, when I take the derivative of x squared with respect to t, you take the derivative of x squared as usual, which it'll be 2x, but you have to apply the chain rule, or general power rule here, because remember, since x is a function of t, you can't just say the derivative of x squared is 2x. That would be if you were differentiating with respect to x but we're differentiating with respect to a variable t. So we have to assume x is a function of t. So we have to, when we, after we get the 2x, we have to multiply by the derivative of x with respect to t. And also, uh, we do the same thing when we take the derivative of y squared, because again, we're, we're differentiating y squared with respect to this outside variable t. So we have to consider y as being a function of t, so when we differentiate, we do get 2y, but we get 2y times the derivative of y with respect to t. Again, kicking in the chain rule or general power rule. And the derivative of a constant, no matter what variable you use for the differentiation, is always going to be 0. Now, what we have here now is from this equation, we have a relationship between these two rates. We, know, we now know how the rate dx over dt and the rate dy over dt are related. Huh, isn't that interesting? So thus, that's why they're called related rates. So now, um, I'm just going to leave this like it is for now, but if at some point later, if, if we wanted to, we could solve for dx over dt in terms of the other variables, or we could solve for dy over dt in terms of the other variables. Let's look at another one. The difference between um, the one I just did and the one I'm about to do is the one I just did, um, this was a constant. But what if that, instead of a constant, what if I had it equal to some other variable like z squared? Well, now when you apply the d over dt operator, you're going to differentiate x squared and y squared just like we did before. And the derivative of x squared with respect to t is going to be 2x times the derivative of x with respect to t. The derivative of y squared is going to be 2y times the derivative of y with respect to t. But then this z squared, it's going to be 2z times the derivative of z with respect to t. So again, now I've actually got three rates related. I've got the dx over the change in x with respect to t, the change in y with respect to t, and the change in z with respect to t. So now I have a relationship between all three of those rates. Let's look at another example. Let's go with our old friendly formula for the area of a circle, a equal pi r squared. Let's apply d over dt to that formula, 
or to that equation. So on the left-hand side, I apply d over dt to a. Well, there's nothing really I can do with that. That's just going to give me the change in a with respect to t, so dA over dt. But when I apply it to this side, I actually can factor the pi out, out of the way, because the pi is a constant. And then I can just take the derivative of r squared. And so the derivative of r squared is 2r, but since I'm differentiating with respect to a variable other than r, in this case t, then I have to use the chain rule and multiply by the change in r with respect to t. Again, the reason I have to do that is because r is a function of t, and I don't know what the function is, so I have to show that I'm going to apply the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of the inside. Now, when you put this all together, you know, pi times 2r, you can just write that as 2 pi r, and so down here I wrote it as 2 pi r times dr over dt. Sometimes you might have to use a little more complicated um, method. Let's say I had this, this is the volume of a cylinder. And let's say that I wanted to, the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h, where h is the height. Let's say I wanted to find the related rates between uh, these three variables, v, r, and h. Well, on the left-hand side, I'm just going to take the derivative of v with respect to t. So that's all I'll get. But on the right-hand side, um, the first thing you realize, again, you can factor the pi out. But when you factor the pi out, you're actually going to be doing the following. You're going to be taking the derivative of r squared h with respect to t. Now I've got to assume in this problem that r and h are functions of t. So when I do this, I've got to keep that in mind. Now this is a product. r squared times h is a product, so I have to use the product rule. So let's talk about the product rule. I would take r squared and then I'd multiply that times the derivative of h with respect to t, which is exactly what that would be, dh over dt. And then I'm going to take the derivative of r squared, which would be 2r. And then I'm going to, well actually, I'm sorry, it's going to be 2r times the derivative of r with respect to t. So that's where the dr over dt comes from, because when you take the derivative of r squared, you're going to get 2r times dr over dt. And then you multiply it by the second function, h. So that's where the h comes from. So that's actually the relationship between those three rates, dv over dt, dh over dt, and dr over dt. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if for some reason we knew that r or h never changed, we could treat it as a constant and avoid the product rule. For example, Let's just suppose that we knew h was always 6. Well, if that were the case, then this would just be volume. If we replace h with 6, then volume would just be 6 pi r squared. And then when I take the derivative of that, well, we know it's going to be 6 pi times the derivative of r squared with respect to t. And the derivative of r squared with respect to t, that would be... Um, here, I'll write it out for you. That would be 6 pi, and the derivative of r squared would be 2r times dr over dt, because r is still a function of t, so we have to use the chain rule. And then you can multiply these two together, 6 pi times 2r, and you could get 12 pi r times dr dt. So now you have um, the rates related there, so you've got the rate the volume is changing with respect to t, and the rate the radius changing with respect to t. You've got them related. Now, if we knew that r was always 6, let's say we knew that r was going to be constant at 6, then that would make this 6 squared, so we would get 36 pi. Well, this would be much easier to differentiate because you would just have h as your variable. So this would be the derivative would be 36 pi times the derivative of h with respect to t. So then the relationship would simply be the change in v over t is equal to 36 pi times the change in h 
with respect to t. Okay, now let's look at some some guidelines for applications of related rates. Basically, I've just laid the found the laid the uh, groundwork so far. So uh, now, how would how do we actually solve related rate problem? Well, first of all, you got to read the problem carefully, think about the given facts and the unknown quantities. If possible, you want to sketch a picture of what you're doing. Write down all the known facts expressing the given and the unknown rates as derivatives of the variables that you get up here. And then you want to formulate a general equation that relates all the variables. So like right here, you know, I had volume equal power squared h or up here where I had x squared plus y squared equal 49. Those are the equations. That's what we're talking about there. And then you're going to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to t to obtain a general relationship between the rates. And then at the end, you substitute any known values and known rates in to find the unknown rate of change. And so that's how we're going to solve uh, related rate problems. I'll go ahead and solve a couple of simple ones uh, here, and then on the next video, I'll do some more comp complex problems. Let's look at number one. A circular region expands uniformly at a rate of 0.25 square centimeters per minute. At what rate is the radius changing when the radius reaches 6 centimeters? Well, we're given that the area is changing at 0.25 square centimeters per minute. So the change in area with respect to time is 0.25. And we're asked to find the rate the radius is changing. So we're looking for the rate the radius is changing when r is 6. Now we don't plug the 6 in until the end. So I want to get the relationship between the rates first. So I have a equal power squared. Now we did this earlier. You apply d over dt to both sides. And d over dta just give me dA over dt. And then the derivative of pi r squared with respect to t is just 2 pi r dr dt. Okay, so now I can plug in the known and solve for the unknown. I was, I was given that dA over dt is 0.25. I'm given that r is 6, so I put in a 6 here. And then I'm solving for dr dt. So this is going to be 0.25 equals 12 pi dr dt. So then divide 0.25 by 12 pi and I get my result, which is approximately 0 0.0066, and the units were centimeters per minute. Okay, one more, and then we'll do the rest on the next video. A snowball shape of a sphere has a volume that is decreasing at a rate of 5 cubic centimeters per minute. Find the rate that the radius of the snowball is changing when the volume of the snowball reaches 162 cubic centimeters. Well, we're given that the volume is changing at a rate of negative 5, and we're also given that we want the rate that the radius is changing when V is 162. So here's your volume formula as it relates to radius. And um, over here, what I need to do here first is I need to find the radius. If I know the volume is 162, I'm going to need the radius. So just go through here. Put in 162 for the volume and then solve for the radius because we're going to need the radius in our problem. Okay, now the formula, if I take this formula and differentiate this formula with respect to t, I'm going to get 4 pi r squared dr dt. So I'll get dv over dt equals 4 pi r squared dr over dt. Now, I need to plug in all the information I have. I know dv over dt is negative 5. I know R is about 4.1 from the previous cell, and dr over dt is what I'm looking for. So now I just take negative 5 and divide it by 4 pi, 4 pi, 4.1 squared, and to get dr over dt, and that's going to give you negative 0.024 centimeters per minute. Okay, and it makes sense that the radius would be decreasing. That's why we have the negative that tells me that the radius is decreasing. And I'll do a couple more on the next video.